So we normally meditate in these sessions for about 40, 45 minutes. And at the end, there should be some time for any questions or feedback or comments you'd like to make. Um, and as usual with meditation, we really take care of our bodies first of all. So I see someone probably switching off their phone, which is a very smart thing to do. And uh, finishing off your tea, I'm also going to do the same. <laughs> and uh, no rush, no rush at all. Just settle in in your own time. This is your space. This is not anything you have to get right or anything you need to perform at. This is time for yourself to just check in with how you feel and to take all those burdens off you. Allowing yourself just to be. So if you do still have your eyes open, just see if you can take in the kind of supportive energy of this uh, shared space, being with so many good people who've come here to practice and uh, contribute that practice energy to the group. And there is a real energy that builds there. And just taking that beautiful sense of friendliness inside, even with your eyes closed, so you're alone in your space, but connected with spiritual friends. There's nothing like one last sip of tea. Oh, that's really good. Ah. Sometimes when we have a cold, it's as though the hot liquid just melts and you congestion away. <laughs> we can imagine our bodies like a frozen block of ice. And as we gently bring the warmth of mindfulness, the kindness that goes along with that mindfulness, to shine on our bodies, it's as though our tensions melt away. So just sensing into your posture, first of all, noticing your position on the seat or the chair and asking your body if there's anything you can do to make him or her or them more comfortable. Treating your body like a being like a friend, you feel like just gently stretching your shoulders or your neck, rolling your shoulders back, stretching out your spine, please do so. Wiggling your toes, making sure they have room. Relaxing any tight bending of the knees. And finding a balance and even distribution of weight between your two buttocks and thighs. So all the muscles can really let go. Feeling that sense of groundedness on your cushion or chair, sofa. And if you are seated, sitting up, feeling your feet on the ground, and just gently inviting the upper body to succumb to the pull of gravity. whilst also sensing in to the space above you. Perhaps gently straightening your spine, if that feels comfortable. Finding the optimum position for your head. <clears throat>
that balance between groundedness, relaxation and alertness, spaciousness. So let's begin by just gently scanning through the body in a more passive than active way. Perhaps imagining that you are soaking up the rays of the sunshine. From the top of the head, across your brow, your eyes, your cheeks, your jaw, everything starts to melt. Like ice melting as it comes in contact with the maze of the sun. Your throat relaxing. As you notice any sensations in your neck or your throat area. And just relax any tension around them. Allowing any naughtiness in your shoulders to just melt away. As the muscles loosen and gently sink towards the ground. Your arms, elbows, Lower arms and hands, relaxing. Softening as they bask in the sun and the warmth of mindfulness and kindness combined. Noticing any sensations you experience from your shoulders right down to your fingertips and just allowing them to be. Feeling your chest area. Perhaps any constriction or tightness. Allowing all the different sensations just to be felt, to be received in this light and kindness. of the sunshine soaking through your chest, melting the tensions away. Right round your ribs, to your diaphragm, your belly. Letting everything hang loose.
And across your upper back, your waist, the hips and the buttocks. Until the whole torso is soaked through with mindfulness and kindness. This hard block, solid body, like an ice cube, starts to melt, soften. As tensions slip away. I'm feeling any sensations in your thighs. Maybe warmth, throbbing, pressure, maybe lightness at the level of the skin. Whatever you experience on your thighs, just giving them permission to relax. As they're supported by the ground or the chair beneath them. No need to hold any tension. And sensing into your knees. Exploring any sensations in your knees. Giving them space to just be. and receive your kindness. And feeling your calves, your shins, your ankles, all the way down to the heels, the soles, the upper part of your feet and your toes. Until your whole body is just bathed in this light of the sun and the warmth that goes along with it. Mindfulness and kindness. Melting some of these tensions and holding patterns, melting them away. And if there's any part of the body that is still niggling, tight, tense, painful, even sick, just smiling from the heart at that area, being really friendly, really kind, the way a mother would be kind to a child who is sick and tuck that child into bed. Just comforting that area by softening around it. Allowing it just to be felt and received in this kindness.
Allowing your body the chance to heal. So for those who wish, you can continue this way, just making peace, holding space, being kind to your body and your mind, or if you would like to deepen these feelings, moods, emotions of loving kindness. And just bring to mind someone you really love and respect. Someone you hold dear. In a way that's very wholesome very nourishing and brings a smile to your heart, maybe to your face, when you think about this special being in your life. And it doesn't have to be someone very close to you. It can be someone you just feel a sense of gratitude and respect towards. someone who's helped you in some way, or maybe a close friend, a niece or a nephew. Who you naturally easily wish well for. And when you have someone in mind, if it's not a human being, it could even be a pet. And just imagine they're right here with you or here with our group sitting among us. Open to receiving our loving kindness. You might find their face or their energy comes to mind. And that's enough. Or maybe to help build the loving kindness, you can remember a time that you spent together where you were happy and at ease, this beautiful sense of friendship and goodwill. And staying connected with your body and especially any feelings of relaxation and ease. Any pleasant sensations or neutral sensations. Perhaps a warmth in the chest or tingling in the hands or in the face. Just gently start sending metta to this person using some simple phrases if that helps you. Wishes that you really feel, you really mean, such as may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be at peace. And make these phrases your own. Really connecting with your deepest, most heartfelt wish for this being. And offering each phrase as a beautiful gift, able to bear fruits. A 
and listening, pausing in the space between each phrase to allow the mind to incline in the direction of loving kindness to the feeling of loving kindness itself. So just gently repeating, may you be happy or whatever is your chosen phrase or phrases. Allowing the mind to incline in that direction before once again planting a seed, planting a phrase and offering this to your dear friend as their face starts to smile, even glow. Allowing yourself to enjoy the process and relax with each and every phrase, just trusting the metta to develop in its own way, in its own time. Meanwhile, you're purifying and uplifting your mind with these thoughts and beautiful intentions, keeping any ill will at bay. gladdening and uplifting the mind.
Now gently letting your loved one stay present with you, but allowing the phrases to cease. Allow that love that you've developed to your friend, your pet, whoever that loved being is, allow that to spread among everyone in this virtual room. Whether you know them or not, these two are very dear. Everybody here is dear to someone. In the same way your friend is dear to you. And everyone is your spiritual companion, at least for this time. Seeking to develop loving kindness within their heart as well. So just imagine this beautiful loving kindness spreading from each one of us into this shared space. Effortlessly. Combining and multiplying many times over. as we receive as much as we give. And from here, the metta spreads even further in every direction from where you are. Wherever we are situated around the globe, the metta starts spreading out. Overlapping with the meta of the other people in this room, creating a beautiful sheet, like a white sheet, maybe a satin or silk sheet spreading over this world, cloaking it in peace, bringing a sense of healing, harmony goodwill. Or maybe like a gentle golden light. Spreading outwards and unbounded to all beings. Just allowing that matter to spread in front of you, to your right side, your left side, behind you, above and below. Radiating messages of goodwill the energy of harmlessness and trust.
Wishing that all beings be safe, be happy, be well, and be at peace. Bringing to mind all beings who are doing good, who are living happily. Who have enough to eat. May they continue to be well, to be safe, to generate goodness into this world. And all beings who are struggling Perhaps as the victims or the perpetrators of harm, all beings who are unsafe right now, perhaps afraid of their lives, not knowing why, where they'll find shelter or a meal to eat. May all those beings be safe. May they be surrounded by love. May they find their inner peace. May all those beings who are causing harm intentionally or unintentionally for other beings, may our loving kindness cause them to lay their weapons down. May they remember the possibility of goodness, of happiness. of trust and peace. May they have wise friends, good teachers. May they find happiness and peace. Just imagining this loving kindness going to all beings, not only human beings, but animals too, who also struggle to survive, often living in fear of a predator, finding it harder sometimes to find food. perhaps losing, losing their habitats, as climates change. May all animals, insects, birds, creatures of the rivers and seas, may they too be happy and well, safe and at peace. And not only visible beings, the beings that we know about, but also invisible beings. 
where the devas in the higher realms or ghosts and beings in the lower realms. May they all receive our loving kindness. May they all be happy and well. So just allowing this meta to flow to all beings wherever there's life, in every direction. Abundant and exalted, without hostility, without ill will. Noticing how that feels. And just resting here for a while. Now, <clears throat> gently bringing your awareness, suffused with loving kindness, back into your room, your body, into your heart, and recognizing that you too are one of these beings who sometimes experiences happiness, is sometimes kind. And sometimes perhaps hurts others, mostly unintentionally, but sometimes you do experience ill will, like every other human being. Just offering yourself the gift of kindness and acceptance. Unconditional love, wishing yourself to be well. To be happy, safe, and at peace. May I always have wise companions on the path. You accept me and forgive me for all my little faults. May I too learn to forgive and accept myself completely. Trusting that there is so much goodness inside. May I be truly happy. May I share that happiness, that peace with all beings. Sabe Sata 
Sabe Pana Sabe Buta Sabe Pungala Sabe Ata Bawa Pariapana Sabe Tio Sabe Purisa Sabe Aria Sabe Anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Wini Parika Aweva Hontu Abia Pacha Hontu Anika Hontu Sugiatanam Parihavantu Dukha Munjanti Yada Lada Sampatito Maui Gajanti Kamasaka Sadu Sadu Ooh That's why it's Sadu it's sad Ooh <laughs> uh, as we hi wake up a little bit It's amazing it even melts the sinus a little bit <laughs> Uh, that is meta in a nutshell <laughs> to get you off to hopefully a good weekend and I don't know about for you but the sunshine's come out over here and uh, she didn't make it into the room but hopefully she's somewhere around uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah we do have a few minutes so if there are any uh, Anything anyone would like to share now is the time. And it doesn't have to be about mental meditation, but it'd be lovely to hear from you, especially if you have anything to share about anything, let's say. And Kim has raised her hand. Hi, in Denmark, where you are, Cindy. She's wondering where you're from. Oops, I think you're muted again. You were unmuted. Can you unmute or do you need a invitation? No? Maybe you didn't mean to put your hand up. Oh, hi. That's it. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, it's a request, actually. Um, it, it would be, I have a lot of sort of physical problems and uh, little disabilities. And I'm just thinking, I tend to panic. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and you know, I'm sure this makes it worse. And I was just thinking, I don't know, maybe you've already done this, but I haven't encountered it. Uh, a sort of a, maybe a guided meditation about um, uh, facing these things with, with some sort of equanimity and courage. Mm. Things like anxiety, yeah? Yeah, well, I, I have a lot of trouble with that. Sometimes I can't really walk very well, and yeah. um, okay. that's a lot of the time. And um, and I just get terribly, I get really frightened actually. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the dealing with the with the problem itself and with the fear that comes up yeah. because of it. And um, and I just I haven't really found anybody that's mm -hmm. um, goes into this very much it would be so yeah. helpful okay sure yeah I can try and do that next week if oh next week I'm not sure what's happening next week I think I'm doing the Oxford Insight actually um yeah I can definitely do that 
at some point. It's something I wanted to do, like, was to give a talk at some point on meditating while sick, because I have lots of chronic diseases, and there are other people in this room that do. I'm sure if you don't already, you will. <laughs> and at least we all get sick, you know. So um, that's a great idea. I think that's really valuable. Thank you for expressing that and, yeah. um, and making that so, request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely consider that because it's um, equanimity is definitely one one very important aspect of um, of handling that. And I think, you know, when that equanimity is softened with a bit of loving kindness, it's even more effective. So we can we can definitely do something like that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Really. I just want to very quickly add to that. I mean, I'm very sad that Kim has such mm. um, scary and painful experiences, but I think we all have stuff. Like I get a lot of restlessness and my mind goes all over the place. And, you know, for years and years and years, I've just tried to push it away, get rid of it, overcome it. And I sort of feel, you know, sometimes we have to let those things in with meta. Yeah. Yeah. And make a lot of space around it, and then it's yeah. like a lump of salt disappearing yeah. in the Ganges. But I still, you know, that, that's still very much work in progress for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just think something like that would be very helpful. And then we yeah. can all use our thing, whatever it was, that we try to overcome. I mean, I know we've got to overcome our defilements, but sometimes we do it the wrong, you know. Yeah, and it's such a loaded word, isn't it? Overcome our defilements. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh dear i mean i would say it's just softening the hindrances yeah you know, yeah some of the and other kind of beautiful methods but i think you're absolutely right and my first thought with that sort of meditation would be to establish a sense of space around the fear especially that's how i've worked with anxiety but uh, i think one of the reasons it's difficult is because our mindfulness and our mind has this natural negativity bias that literally sucks in and contracts around the difficult. And it needs reminders to keep mm -hmm. on expanding, keep on expanding, which is scary to do. Mm -hmm. But if you can keep on widening the field of awareness, that can be really helpful. And so a guided meditation on that will remind people because often we know what to do. We just forget, isn't it? Because we have our habits, we have our tendencies. And some of them are actually neurological like they're ingrained in the way our brains work so yeah and sometimes we actually don't want to get sometimes I find I don't know whether other people have had this yeah. experience I actually don't, don't want, want to, to let go of them because right. otherwise I'll sort of you know there's a sort of almost can be a sort of attachment to our yeah but it is a honing in even yeah. yes not wanting it it's a honing in because yes. it's yeah you're yeah. relating to it in a kind of push and pull sort yeah, of way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you too. And Richard's just said that he finds walking meditation helpful. That can be, yeah, that's really good too, because you're grounding yourself, you're grounding yourself in your body. Yeah. Yeah. This is real life, isn't it? This is really real life. Like how do we actually cope when these really strong emotions come up? And uh, it's so easy to just go into wanting to reject. Okay, good. Anything else? It is already 10 o'clock, but are there any last comments or questions or reflections anyone has? If not, maybe just type in uh, a word about how you're doing now, perhaps. It would be nice to hear from you at the end. Any word? that describes an emotion, a feeling, something you notice. And this is a suggestion. You don't have to do this. <laughs> okay. Happy, calm, hope. Beautiful. Thank you very much. More awake and grounded. Feeling soft and open. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. And all the spiritual friends here. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't know if Cindy noticed that uh kim was asking whereabouts in denmark you are you might be in a similar area or you might not anyway before i turn off the chat i'll give you a chance to share and otherwise i guess charlotte long uh nicholas is more grounded too soft 
Excellent. Grounded and soft. Isn't that a beautiful combination? Yeah, this is almost what we sort of hope to achieve in a sense. I mean, it's like a natural result of meditation, but it's also, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's so sweet. Everybody's holding Kim in their hearts. So sending you lots of metta. Yeah. Okay. All right. So goodbye. <laughs> Are you going to write anything in the chat, Manoi? Any links? Yeah, I would just when? wait because people were kind of putting the things and maybe oh. I, while they were typing, I just wanted to thank you, Honorable, for the meta sessions, holding these things. And every week it is a different um, session and we can get all these tools from the YouTube, as you know, and um, different types of meta meditations and so many other teachings in the Anukampa uh, project, Anukampa project um, YouTube channel. And uh, also just a reminder that all these things, um, usual uh, teachings are offered on the donation basis on the spirit of generosity. And if you are able, um, you will have a chance of um, showing your generosity uh, by going to the Anukampa Bikuni project slash forward slash um, donation and uh, donate whatever you can. Um, it will be uh, <clears throat> very valuable and received with much, much metta. Sorry, I'm also having a cold and a <clears throat> bit difficult to talk. And if you want to get um, involved in any other way, um, please uh, contact team at anukampaproject.org if you want to do some delivery, uh, food dana or anything. And also there's a needed items list in the website and uh, there's an event page with uh, so much of um, the usual events, uh, ongoing events as well as one-off events um, like um, special retreats that and talks that Venerable Chanda holds and also uh, the uh, events from um, by Venerable uh, by Ajahn Brahmali and Ajahn uh, Brahm and Venerable Chanda's online retreat. There's so many things coming up and it's getting updated. So please have a look on and off. Thank you. Thank you, Manoi. I've just written in some specific things. So the newest thing, which is coming out in the newsletter, we have an online Vesak celebration. Vesak is the day of the Buddha's enlightenment, etc. <laughs> and uh, that's from four till six. And then on in June the 2nd, I, we only have a few places, but there are a few more places left. A few people wrote in already um, from the volunteer group. So about 10 more people can come on June the 2nd, if you wish, between, uh, mm, let me write it in the box. It's going to be between 2.30 and 6 p.m. And we're just going to have some meditation together and an opportunity for some Dhamma discussion, a cup of tea, and basically you see the monastery. So uh, for that, because we're not putting our address online, you could just write to us at bookings at anukampaproject.org. We're going to put it in the newsletter too. So, I mean, it might get very full soon, but I thought I'll mention it to the group because in case you are able to come, you're our closest folks. So, yeah, I think Matthias is going to be with us actually at that time. So you don't even need to apply, Matthias. <laughs> Yeah, and I know some of you in other countries, but still we'll be putting a lot of things online. And the basic thing is online from four till six. So, um, yeah, we might just have a couple of local folks for the Dana before that. Good. So wish you really a wonderful week. And um, you are now able to unmute and wave goodbye should you wish. So take care, everybody. Bye.